Hello everyone, thank you for joining me. I would like to share with you actually my own practice. This is my uh, uh, normal vinyasa yoga. I'll focus on the breathing, but I'll really much inspire for some Ashtanga movement. So I'm on the front of my mat. Uh, I'll just settle in uh, Samastati He. Shoulders nice long, crown of the head long. Couple of breathing in, extend the arms in the sky. Look up, and on the exhale, we'll uh, gentle drive the body all the way down. We'll take a nice inhale, move the crown of the head all the way forward, and now we'll step gentle the legs back into the tabletop. And I'll we'll place my knee down. Again, extend body all the way down. And it's just gentle, moving in vinyasa, move the chest up and come back in down dog. So I said this is inspired uh, Ashtanga, some movement from Ashtanga, but it's my own practice, something I like to do when I don't have a time, one hour and a half to do a full practice. I just settle in a few movements, few postures, into the breathing and settle in. So keeping this Sura Namaskara A and uh, Sura Namaskara B with few modifications to suit my body. I relax my head, I look on the direction of my knees, I lift my heels up, I look forward, and I will step one leg and let another to follow in the front of the mat. Lengthening the crown of the head, I will exhale, move the nose closer to the knees, lightly bend the knees, roll the body all the way up, take the palms off of the head, I look up in the sky, and I come back into Samasthiti here. I'll do more again. So prepare to extend the arms up, and exhale, bend the knees, and take my hands down. When I reach down, I inhale, lengthening the crown of the head, look up, take a breathing nice into the lungs, and then stepping or jumping the legs back, maybe knee down, but for this time I take my plank, inhale, reach the chest up, create a mini back bend, and exhale, come back into down dog. I'll take the down dog in stillness. I'm softening a little bit the tie, the back of the knees, but I look in the direction of the knees, or maybe in the navel. I relax the back of my neck, but very important, I draw my low abdomen in, and I send my sit bones up and back. Spread the fingers, and I do it again. I set the other leg forward, another to follow, lengthening the crown of the head, and exhale, move the head down. Bend the knees, roll the arms all the way up in the sky, reaching nice, tall, and come back in Samastiti. Okay, so I modify it be here, take the arms up, I grab the right wrist, and a gentle move to the left side, stretching the shoulders, and I switch sides, a little bit of side bend to stretch the serratus muscles under the armpit, and come back in the center. Or taking the head, I set the hands on the back, interrupt the fingers, pull the shoulders in external rotation, head up, pelvis forward. With exhale, or lightly bend the knees, and come back into the center. Take the knees bent, taking chair pose, Rana Mascara B, palms touch, and I keep the knees bent, look up, and exhale, I take the hands all the way down into the mat. I will walk, step, jump, the legs all the way back, into the plank. I'll exhale body down, inhale, reach your chest up, and set back into the down dog position. Down dog position, right leg forward, left heel down, arms up, look up, nice throw the belly in, exhale, take the hands down, send the right leg back, again plank, exhale body down. Inhale, move the chest up, and exhale, come back in down dog. Repeat left side, left leg forward, right heel down, Move the arms in the sky, look up, exhale, take the hands down, set back into plank, exhale, body down. Inhale, move the chest up, and I'll sit back into down dog. So I said, repeat, this is my own practice, but be welcome to join me from home. If you want to practice, let me know, comment, send me a message, let me know how you feel after this practice. So all the elements of Ashtanga, Judah Berlin, I calm my mind. I feel the emptiness into the pelvis. I look forward, walking, stepping, jumping forward. And then four, leave your head closer to the knees, bend the knees, come lightly into Utkatasana chair pose, and come back into the center, into the place. So I'm preparing for the first movement. I'm taking a fourfold. Uh, so I bend, taking the big toes with two fingers, release in nice inhale and exhale. Draw the belly in, move the nose closer to the knees, keep the shoulders away from the ears, 
pivot a little tiny bit on the ball of the foot to feeling a nice stretching in the back of the hamstrings and into the lower back. I'll focus on the breathing. I calm my mind. I just notice and feel the postures. Inhale, lengthen in the crown of the head. And again, interlock the fingers on the back or place the palms on the, the lower back, support the lower back. Lightly move your body all the way forward. And now pivot the pelvis forward, move the head back and leave your elbows closer and pulling the shoulders back. Really getting in your, if you practice with me, just be careful. Again, this is I said to use my own practice, so for you my looks different. I'm coming again into fourfold, and this time in Padahastasana, I place my palms under the sole of the foot and big toes touching my wrist. Shift away into the ball of the foot. Again, the same elements, shoulders away from the ear. And I pivot a bit forward and do my best I can to move forward and will never hold my breath. I take a free breathing. Release. Gently place the palms into the space in the front of your mat. Interlock the fingers again over the back and I shift the weight to one side. I will bend this time the right leg and twist to the other side. Keep your arms straight, looking nice, looking good, feel good for the uh, twist. I'll come back, bend the opposite leg and rolling to the other side. Look up to the ceiling, release, inhale. Hands will come back into the space of the mat. Pushing your hands, lift the heels up as much as you like, feeling a bit of weight into your hands, and jump back, step back, exhale, body down. Inhale, moving in vinyasa, shoulders back, head up. Exhale, I will take a down dog to reposition my body into the down dog position. I will take inhale, take exhale. I look forward, a nice walking, stepping, jumping all the way forward. I'm coming again in the front of the mat. When you reach the place, roll the body all the way up. Take arms all the way up in the sky. Come back, Samasthiti. Set the right leg to the back of the room, pointing, preparing from Trikonasana, right side. Hook the big toes with your fingers, extend the right leg, activate the quads on the front leg. And I'm taking the left arms up, and I do my best I can to pull my left shoulders back and activate the legs down into the mat. I stay about five counts. It'll be long counts, five counts. I look down, bend the right leg, come back in the center. And we'll do the same trikonasana, this time to the left leg. So the left leg, it's active, it's not floppy. It's uh, interesting, uh, the postures really needs a lot of stability in the legs. And in order to uh, st stabilizing the lower back, of course, you need to draw the belly in, push the shoulder stay, with your breathing, look down, and again, rolling all the way up. Uh, I'll roll again one more time, right side, I will reverse the triangle. So the back heel, it's important, taking the right hand down, and move that left arms up. Uh, square the hips, that means I work my best to bring the right hip back, and move the left hip forward, bow leg straight, and I really pivot in the ball of my foot and the heels down into the mat. Roll all the way up, and we'll do the same to the other side to create symmetry and balance into the flow. Reverse triangle to the left side, and left hand down, right hand up. So moving in your pace, right hand down, left arms up. Head back, pushing in the heel in the back leg. Don't lift the back heel up. Draw the belly in, take with me, inhale. Exhale, uh, preparing to moving away, look down. Coming all the way up and come back in the moment here. So I started to go again, take a little bit much more space between the legs. And I'm going back to the right leg one more time. I bend my right leg, knee on top to the right ankle. Extend the right hand forward, extend the left hands back. Uh, lightly preparing the warrior two, preparation from the next pose. Inhale. Except I'm taking my right hand outside to the right ankle and roll the left arms over the head. Draw the chest up to the sky. Keep the space between your shoulders and your ears and push it into the back leg. Don't collapse in the hips, but keep the hips equal if it's possible. Look down, roll all the way up. And okay, do to the other side, the same sequence. Preparing the left leg on top of the left ankle. Extend the left arms forward, right arms back. 
look on the direction of their left fingertips. And this is this will really guide me to our next pose. Take the left fingertips outside to the left ankle, right arms over the head, palms, the right palms, facing down the mat, and I look up on the fingertips. Nice inhale. Nice exhale, we'll come back all the way into the center. Oh, I'll start gentle to walk the heels in, toes in, heels in, toes in. Anyway, coming all the way into the middle, big toes touch, knees touch, bend the knees into lightly chair pose, and I twist, take the twist right side. So taking the shoulders, do my best I can to get the knees in alignment, the hips in alignment, and the crown of the head forward. Don't lean to one side, nice into inhale, look down, release the hands down and the head closer to the knees. And I prepare to move to the other twist. I twist to the left side, left elbow on top to the left knee. Palms go into the chest position and just push the shoulders away. Little tiny um, gap between my palms and my chest today to keep my shoulders open. Look down, hands down and release the head down. Inhale, move the crown of the head up. And I'm taking again some steps uh, away. So I'm um, coming back into open legs and I release my head down. Prasarita Padottanasana A. Oh, place the palms into the mat and the position correctly into the postures with the palms and head. Create a triangle pose. Heels down. Now, if you feel light into the legs, I like to play with these postures. I like to lift my legs up. I leave the heels to touch. Toes to touch, engage the core, elbows on top of the wrist, and definitely the neck is very, very active, especially the back neck. And coming all the way down, when you reach the mat, inhale, lengthening up. And exhale, walk my hands forward. It's my favorite stretch. Take the hands forward, the hands in down dog, and the legs in prasarita. Maybe move a little bit the head side to side. Reposition if the legs are uh, disconnected with the mat. And this time I will interlock the fingers over the back. And again, I move my head down and arms over the head. Legs are active, so it's very important. Otherwise, you might feel quite strong position if you not activate your legs. And maybe hands might touch or maybe not touch the mat. I'm just observing, you open your shoulders. Good shoulders later for the class. So we uh, come back and gently roll the body all the way up. Look forward. And again, bring the heels, bring the toes. A little bit closer if you want. And now I hook the big toes briefly. I will bend the elbows. I do my best I can again to keep the elbows uh, on the uh, direction of the wrist and shoulders and relax the spine. And I don't like this time the head to touch the mat, just keeping the head slightly away from the mat to relax the back, to feel like a sensation of the traction into the spine. When I come back in the center, I bring the legs a little tiny closer this time, so just a little uh, uh, um, wider than your hips. Take the hands on your hips. And moving uh, into deeper hamstrings, so take the right toes back, back heel, the left heel in 45 degrees. Interlock the fingers into reverse prep position on the back, pinky fingers touch the thoracic. With exhale, I move the head toes to the right knee. You can look in direction if you want on the knee. If you, if you practice with me, you can even interlock your fingers on the back or maybe elbows, don't need the reverse prep position. I will move to the other side. Uh, the position of the legs is very important in this position, into this pose. Heel, uh, from heel, get a line into the back of the heel, so don't try to crisscross your legs. And keeping this good alignment into your hips help to uh, equalize in any uh, problems you have into your hips. Or at least uh, moving in a uh, variation of Udita Hasta, Padangusta, so now going to the balancing postures. Uh, I, sometimes I place my hands on my knee, sometimes I hook my big toes. For today, I extend my legs, uh, hooking, length, uh, lengthening up. I will take inhale. Exhale, I move the right leg to the right side. Look where maybe four, or maybe look to opposite side, just to create this balance. And release your right leg back down. Moving gentle the hips. I say this is the almost half an hour session. It's not one hour and a half. So 
are just taking few movements to really feel. I do some practice. So sometimes when you practice and you don't have time, it's nice just to incorporate some movements. I repeat the same movement of Utita Hasta to the left side. Okay, of course, if you want to um, do with me and you want to step a little bit longer into the postures, you can pause the video and do a little bit more. I will bend my knees, move the knees, pigeon the toes. Moving into my lasana pose or garland pose, maybe you're seeing like this. Knees to the side, head, palms in the prayer position. Head back, heels down. And I can stay here. I really enjoy this hip opener posture. If you crave to go a bit deeper, you can just play a little bit with the crow pose, placing the elbows. If you don't know how to do crow pose, I have another um, tutorial on my YouTube channel about how to do crow pose. It's nice to just practice. It's good. It's the first arm balance you learn. You play a little bit. You place the toes down and come back into the center. And now I get into the sitting posture. So extend the legs, Paschimottanasana, next position. I extend the legs, uh, flex the sole of the foot, and I hook the big toes with the fingers, pull the shoulders away, draw the belly in, and with exhale, I move my head closer to the knees. Each time when I inhale, I lengthening up. Each time I exhale, the chest going closer to the knees. I feel a good, nice stretch on the back of my hamstrings and into the lower back. And inhale. And exhale. Moving next pose in Purvottanasana, I place my fingertips facing the heels, point the toes, arms a little bit back because when I lift up, the shoulders should be relatively on top of the, the wrist. And with exhale, move up, move the pelvis up, head back, stay nice in hand. And exhale. It's a posture that really requires some core. Take the palm back down and come back into the center. I like to cross my legs, take the hands a little bit forward, step one leg back, step another one back, and exhale, taking a vinyasa to reset. Inhale, move the chest up, and again, back into your down dog. Looking back, looking good. Now, jumping through, or maybe place the knee down and extend forward. So, jump through by bend one leg and another, and gently place my back back down and extend the legs all the way forward. Bend the right leg, bring the right leg to the side, and take the right ankle very close to the left hip. Take the right hand behind, find the toes, and exhale, I'm moving all the way forward. Modification also available, always available for any postures. Uh, rather, to jump the body and feeling stress, you can modify if you want to practice with me. Again, inhale, release this leg. And I'm coming into Janu Shashasana, a right side, heel closer to the pubic bone and bend the right knee. And I'm moving the sternum along to the left leg. Keep activate the left leg, keeping the right knee to the side and lengthening the spine. Again, I'm not dumping my head down. I keep my head long. And inhale, reach up and coming back. I'm moving this time today for all three of them. So moving Marichasana B, heel under the perineum region, uh, right heel a bit, a little bit about, let's say, eight, 80 grade, you know, away uh, to the front leg and release the head down. It's uh, quite strong from the ankle. Inhale. And I reach the chest up, come back. And the last one is quite challenging. It's Janusha C. Good for the back of your uh, uh, ankle. So I take the toes, Janusha Shasana C. Toes in, reach the bum up, bit before then coming all the way forward. So this practice, I say, is very much inspired for Ashtanga. It's not obviously traditional as how the sequence looks like. But uh, when you don't have time and you want to really get those few postures in, it's quite nice to just listen to the body and do how you connect with your Ashtanga in that day. Reach your chest up, release the raw leg uh, from this. And I'm taking again a vinyasa to reset all these movements to the left side. So it's very important how long you stay into the postures. And usually, and I notice um, sometimes people will rush on the left side. They do right side and the left left is going close. So I really, um, on my practice, on my own practice and on my um, teaching, 
always um, think about to do the same to both sides. So again, I will bend my left leg, taking the side, maybe find the toes, taking the right hand forward, chest down, and just feeling the heel into the lower abdomen. This is actually the idea for this posture. And again, reach your chest up, let go to the toes, and moving for all three Janu Shashasana. So heel in. So this practice maybe is more as an inspiration, maybe as a guidance. You can do a few postures, even 10 minutes, even 20 minutes, 30 minutes. It would be fantastic if you have, if you go to work and you have no time to go on the classes. But I always encourage you to uh, really looking into the proper sequence of Ashtanga. Each posture will... Uh, uh, introduce you to another and by the end of the class you really feel you you did something good for, for your physical body and also for your emotional body so i finished this sequence here with the last one with the janu shasana uh, c when i take in my ball of my foot knees knees to touch so try to not go forward if you practice with me if the knee uh, is sticking out um, some postures require uh, a little bit more time, maybe some modifications, maybe uh, when teacher will help you. And come back, nice cross the legs, and uh, now uh, moving up and I'm coming into uh, vinyasa again to reset all this movement and release the body down. Inhale, move the chest nice and tall up, and a nice and easy come back when I'm ready into the position uh, all started into the down dog okay jumping through preparing for uh, next set of the postures into uh, marichasana a so heel closer the right heel bend the right heel closer to the right hip the right knee bend and i'm rolling the right arms forward and wrapping the right arm around the right leg and stand the left arms back and I move my head closer to the extending leg flex the sole of the foot head down this is a posture for many people they're really challenged from the shoulders issue with the shoulders you might feel in here so if you cannot find the fingertips on the back you can just take the hands to the side it's also available to do this uh, anytime you like uh, inhale, uh, exhale, move to the other side, bend the left leg, Marichasana A, wrapping the left arm, the right triceps in front of the shin, and deeper you can get, better will be. Uh, some, uh, maybe one side is much open to the other, maybe it's due to the shoulders, maybe it's due to uh, any balance in the hips, but that's okay, do the best you can. Again, stay about five long counts in each postures, feel the breathing, and relax the legs. I'm introducing here one from the second series on Krunchasana. I'll bend my right leg in Tranga Kapada. I'll bend my left leg and extending up. You can take the palms on the sole of the foot. But I do my best I can to not lean back. So I'm trying to encourage my uh, body to go forward and feeling the front leg closer. Shoulders away, look on the toes, releasing. Briefly, I take my toes on top to the left leg, just a feeling a bit of releasing into variation of the hips, and let go, release the legs forward, and we'll do the same to the other side, bend the left leg to the left side in Trangeka, uh, and move into the other side, so extending the other leg forward, I look on the toes, modify, maybe interrupt the fingers, but keeping the gaze up and keeping the front leg closer to your chest. Placing the, uh, the ankle on, again on top of the leg, release. And I will release uh, nice bow legs. I will take another vinyasa. I like to take vinyasa between uh, postures because I feel I relax a little bit. Or uh, before I do that vinyasa, in this case, I do some cow stretch. It's also a welcome, especially when you do some loads of forefold, loads of bends. 
And preparing Pohalwiri into the strength, into Navasana. So extend the legs, take the hands forward, keep the arms parallel with the uh, floor. I like to keep, keep my chest, my shoulders in alignment with my knees. Cross your legs, lift your bum up, place your bum back down, and we'll do it again. So preparing, I try to not cheat. This is a portion where people cheat. <laughs> Um, now work, see which one is challenging you. For me, a little bit more challenging if I lift my legs up. Uh, so again, place the bum back down. Let's do it again. Extend the legs, take the palms forward, palms parallel. Look forward, keeping the shoulders back. Look on the toes, inhale, cross the legs, take the palm, lift your bum up and place your bum back down. Let's do it again. Extend one, two. Three, four, stay with the breathing. And five, cross your legs, lift the palm up, place, and I will do again. This is when you start to feel. Extending again, take five counts. And again, cross the legs, lift your palm up, nice into inhale, and place your palm back down. Okay, so that was the Navasana. Uh, many other picture, um, postures into this uh, uh, sequence um, I follow. But I'm going now to the back bend, so i releasing the body down. First, I'm doing Setu Bandhasana or supporting bridge. Good, uh, always take a first bridge before I do the wheel. It's uh, train my front my, of my body to uh, look, uh, to prepare this one. So uh, I check in my position of my knees, my heels. Now, a little bit of uh, tips I can give you if you have long legs. Um, I like to take a little tiny bit, the legs will be wider than my hips. And I move my uh, pubic bone forward and uh, a bit down into the mat to lift the chest up and chest, like chest going over the head and the bum muscles going towards the knee on the heels. So feeling that kind of extension. Before you can do a couple of times, it's not uh, a bad thing to do maybe another two, three uh, like this. Move the knees to the side. If you uh, work towards the wheel, work my place in the palms position uh, next to the ears, elbows. Now, I learned a very good tip for myself. I learned a tip to place my shoulder somehow back into the socket when I lift up. Now, due to my uh, issues with my scoliosis and um, other problem I have in my spine, uh, I just really take time to lift up. I'm no rushing in the postures, and I feel the back bend. I feel the back bend as a healing uh, posture. I release the head, keeping the bum up. No necessary to really overextend the shoulders as long as you feel healthy into the shoulders. That's fine. One, if you have enough, take the knees in, roll the knees. To the right side, keep the knees together. Move the head to the opposite side. Just is good stretch for the lower back. And I move to the other side. So again, preparing to roll the legs to the other side. Leave the head down. Move the head to the other direction, if you would like. Okay, so come back in the center. Rock the body once forward and uh, come back into the tabletop. From the tabletop position, if you want to do a couple of cow cow stretch, very welcome. I'm moving into, again, another second uh, portion from the second series, into Ushrasana or Kamal Pose. Kamal Pose is fantastic back bands. It's one of my favorite back bands. Doesn't put too much stretch into the shoulders, but also I feel quite open up my, ch my chest. So keeping the shoulders back, keep the sh uh, chest up to the sky, pelvis forward, look back, maybe touching the uh, heels. Now the hips and knees should be in alignment, so don't lean back, feel the quads active in this position. Gentle releasing uh, into the pose, into a nice tabletop. I take three the needle, take the right hand underneath to the left, extend the left arms forward, Beautiful twist from um, after camel pose, releasing the muscles on the back, the lats, the trapezoid, the rhombus muscles, all on the back, muscle is relaxing. Okay, we come back, we switch to the other side, taking the three the needle to the other side. 
head down, extend the other hand, really stretching all this place here. And a nice inhale will come back uh, when you're ready into the center position. So grabbing back into your uh, tabletop position. And from the tabletop position, again, if you want to take again a couple of cauca stretch, but in this case, I do something, one of my favorite uh, stretch um, sometimes I want to do is to uh, just put the elbows down and move in the same. Or uh, if you want to work towards dolphin pose or maybe headstand, you prepare to work into the handstand. Now, whatever you lift the legs up, maybe some people bring the knees into the chest, both legs, maybe legs together, as long as you feel stable, safe, you don't put pressure into the back of the neck, stay about, at least I stay here, about 15 counts. Um, nice, counting, steady. Um, it should be a meditative posture, should not feel stretch into the back. Anytime you're feeling the neck is not healthy, not aligned, you need to revisit with your teacher these postures and see what's going on. Take the knee down, come back into the center, relax a bit the head, move the head left and right, keep the head nice and relaxed, and special from these postures, or even staying still into the child pose if you want. Come back in tabletop, move the head to the left side, hip to the left, and switch to the side. Take the head to the right and hip to the right. It's good for the spine. You can do a couple of times like that, feeling good to rearrange like sensation of the spine. The spine doing quite being upside down, you might feel it. And briefly, I take my bum back of my heel into uh, putting pressure into the back of my ankle, or front of my ankle and the big toes. Take the hands of my knees, keep the spine long, crumb of the head long, and I bring a little bit of chin back into my um, uh, chest. So it's, I, I named this one chicken head, so chin back. It's good for the cervical spine from the back of the neck. Now, coming into crossing legs, maybe half lotus. Uh, pushes, or if you have full lotus, taking the other leg on top and extend the hands forward, taking the index fingers and the thumbs to touch, three fingers free, the elbows facing up. Again, I like to draw a little bit the chin, the ch chin back. If you do this, really release any tension into the back of the neck. Keep the shoulders away from your ears and look down. Very deep breathing I'm taking here, Ujjayi breath. Release the legs one by one. Come back into the mud, feel yourself comfortable, and uh, we lie down. So we stay here. Uh, you can uh, now, I will finish this video. I will leave you in peace to do your Shavasana. Stay at least five minutes. Really relax. Please let me know how you felt in this, uh, my own personal practice. Observe, I didn't give you too many modification, variation. It's just because it's my own things. I like to, how I felt today to do my practice. Thank you so much. And I hope I see you soon. Bye-bye.